so I wanted to do another video on body armour, because for some reason body armour seems to be a magnet for people with very strong opinions on it. Um, in this video I'm not going to really be talking about infantry style armour, I'm going to be talking about police armour and civilian kind of bulletproof, or we well, should use the words resistant because they're not proof, but bullet resistant and stab resistant vests. Um, because there's lots of reasons you may want to own one of these as a civilian or like private sort of security kind of things, and um, Obviously, the intent of this is to protect your vital organs from being shot or stabbed by handgun caliber rounds or knives. So, in my opinion, they're very good things, but there's lots of people that seem to hate them. So I thought what would be a good idea in this video would be to weigh up some of the pros and cons, and I'll present some of the arguments as balanced and neutrally as I can. Um, bear in mind, my opinion is these are very good for what they are. And then what we can do is we can try and analyse the points. Now, if you disagree with me, and you want to say why something is good or bad in your opinion in the comments, please just do it politely. If you say something in a polite way, and you're not rude about it, even if you disagree with me, I'm probably going to take your points on board. If you say, you're wrong, fuck you, then you're not going to convince anyone, are you? So, let's start off with this. So, what this kind of armour is, as you can see, is basically how it works is, I will show you the panel from one. It is Kevlar armour, and this, the police stuff that the UK police use, because you can buy it as cheap surplus even when it's still in pretty much brand new condition, is essentially soft body armour as in Kevlar, um, and it's normally Kevlar 2 or Kevlar 2A, or sometimes even 3A, but they're a bit bulkier, and um, some sort of stab or spike resistant bit put into it. So this is one I use for target sort of shooting and sort of ballistic tests, this one to find out, you know, if you had one of these in your armour, what it would and wouldn't protect you from. Um, and this basically works by having riveted chainmail, like good old medieval chainmail, in front of the Kevlar panel. So knives basically get stuck on this before they can actually penetrate the armour. So one of the things I've heard people say is that Kevlar isn't actually stab proof or, you know, stab resistant, so somebody with a knife can stab straight through it. That's partially true. It's harder to stab through, stab through Kevlar than if you were stabbing through nothing or simple cloth, um, but it can certainly be stabbed through, especially if you have a very thin knife with sort of a point. Um, we'll get on to spikes in a moment as well, but the point is with Kevlar at least, is that this is why they always, if it's combined stab and bullet resistant armour, not just bullet resistant armour, they generally do something like this. They either use chain mail or they use like a thin bit of polycarbonate or anything like that. And the point is that you put one thing in it that's stab resistant or slash resistant and you have the other bit that's um, the bullet resistant. You put the two layers together, it does both jobs without increasing the weight or anything of the vest by very much. Because this chain mail barely weighs anything, just having this sort of tape to the front of the panel. So, I don't think that's really all that valid an argument. Yes, if you had just a bullet resistant jacket with no stab resistance on, and you were wearing that to give you protection from knives, it wouldn't do much. Now, there's also a point that um, if somebody has a spike, say an ice pick, or something that's very thin and very long, like a bodkin type head on an arrow, then that would certainly penetrate it. Um, the better stab resistant um, ones, because you get, in the UK they kind of give it the USNIJ sort of style thing for the bullet defence, and then what they tend to do is use a stab and spike rating, you know, the higher that is the better. So some vests might be stab 1, spike 0, which means they'll only protect you from stabbing from sort of generic knives. Um, the spikes won't penetrate, uh, you know, the spikes will penetrate easily and it won't protect you from spikes. Then you'll get some that might be stab 2, spike 1, where again, spikes up to a certain amount of force won't be able to penetrate, but then if you go over that they will. Um, and then, you know, it's much better against blades and stab 1, so it's always best to go for the best type of armour if you can, unless it's too expensive or too heavy. But if you've got ones that are stab and spike resistant, then, you know, knives aren't going to go through it easily. So, to give you some examples, even something like this with a chain mail, you can see on the back there has been times things have penetrated it. But when I've tested this, with crossbows, the only way you're going to get through this with a crossbow is if you have a very precise bodkin tip. And this isn't spike resistant, this armour, which is what the spike resistance is meant to stop. Um, in terms of stab resistance, one of my mates, who's a lot stronger than me, has managed to stab through this once or twice using a Fairbind Sykes knife, and he found it very, very difficult. So, that's an argument I've heard on videos where I've tested the armour, people saying you're too weak. If you were stronger, you'd be able to stab through it. Well, that may be true, but again, you know, the point I want to make is when they test stab-resistant armour and all this sort of stuff, 
in the factory generally they have a massive pneumatic kind of spike or whatever that comes down on it which can exert a lot more force than a human being can. If it can survive that it's not going to be stabbed through by a person. Maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime or somebody could have done it but the point is your average mugger on the street is not going to be able to stab through it which is the point of it really isn't it. Um, so let's get on to some of the other arguments. One is that it's too heavy. Now I personally think this is quite light and they're getting lighter and everything than this now. This particular vest is probably about two kilos if that, but the vest is supported on your shoulders and it's supported at the waist and there's, it's basically got a bit of velcro sort of um, elasticated stuff that goes around your waist so it's very comfortable. Um, remember I'm asthmatic and I'm chronically ill with ulcerative colitis um, so I'm pretty skinny and obviously you know all that sort of stuff and I can still wear this no problem I could wear this all day I've heard some people say again they're too heavy it's gonna cause all sorts of shoulder and back problems but I think that again is people confusing this sort of stuff with military you know hard plate style armor you know where you've got both the Kevlar and like trauma plates another argument I see which I really don't like um, is where people say Although this armour protects you from this, what if somebody uses something greater? So this is considered good enough for the police, basically. What this protects you from, for the UK police at least, is, as I said, pistol rounds and knife attacks. It won't stop, by any measure, uh, things like AR-15s, you know, like 556 NATO, 762 NATO, 545 Soviet, 762 Soviet. It's not going to stop any proper rifle calibres. They are going to go straight through it and straight through you. Um, but the point is, it's not designed to stop that. The point of these vests, obviously, is for the police or whoever to wear them and do an everyday job and be protected from the things you're likely to encounter, which is somebody with an illegal handgun or carrying a knife on them that will stab or shoot you, um, you know, to flee a scene or whatever or in a robbery or anything like that. So, yeah, it's designed to stop the stuff it's designed for. Again, if you really wanted armour that would work against rifle rounds, you're not really going to be in all that much luck because even the military stuff isn't guaranteed to work. But again, you could spend hundreds on a really expensive military thing, but good luck lugging that around on your day. Now, the great things with these, as I've said before, is you can conceal them. You can get models that are far more slimline than this. This is actually an overt piece of body armour, but it's not got too many pockets and clips on it. Um, but you can wear this under a jacket, and if anybody doesn't know that you've got body armour on, they wouldn't think you've got it on. So just to prove that, let's put my branded hoodie on. Remember, if you want to support the channel, there's a Teespring link below. So let's put this on, and you'll still see some of the shape of the body armour underneath, but it's not going to be all that noticeable. So let's just get that down over there. Alright, there we go. So again, yes, you can see some of the outlines of the body armour, but unless you knew the person really well, you wouldn't know it, and some coats will obviously, the more padding in the coat, the harder it is to see it. So you can certainly wear these covertly, and remember, if I'd have bought a more covert vest, I could certainly wear it under a jacket and hide it even more. Right, now let's go on to the point of whether or not you should wear it covertly or overtly. I'm always in the mindset of, as a civilian, you should wear it covertly, as in under a coat so people can't see you're wearing it. The reason being is obviously you don't want to be mistaken for law enforcement or seem like you're imitating law enforcement or anything like that. When people as security guards wear it, they normally wear it overtly, and obviously the police wear it overtly. They've got their uniform on and then this goes on top of the uniform. And then they've normally got things like radios and everything else clipped onto them. So the reason saying that is when I used to wear it, when I used to work in an area that had a lot of drug addicts and things like that, and you always had the worry of getting mugged because people were mugged and robbed and things like that in the area I worked in, People say, oh, you're paranoid for wanting this, but I don't actually think I was, you know, judging on my experiences. Um, you know, the point I was going back to is I always wore it under a coat. So in the winter, it's quite pleasant. Again, in the summer, it's not that practical, and sometimes I'd actually have days in the summer where I didn't wear it. Um, and obviously, I don't wear this all the time. I don't very wear it very much at all now, because I work in a much nicer place where there's, like, no crime. You know, there might be a bit of shoplifting, but that's it. So I don't actually need, um, you know, a vest like this. So uh, other than when I end up using it for videos, I don't use it for much. But obviously, if you lived in some inner city areas that had very high knife crime or whatever, they're certainly worth considering. Because the thing that annoys me is I'll sometimes get comments where people call you paranoid for wanting it, but they'll be replying to somebody else saying that knife crime's a massive problem, that we should have things like pepper spray to protect ourselves. So you're admitting that knife crime is a problem, that you're thinking that having objects that are passive self-defense items make you paranoid. It's very strange. I can't really make an argument to defend that logic. I think that's just when people get quite wound up and make rude comments. But 
there you go. So I don't think there's many more points to consider with body armor. Um, there's all, obviously the running out of date factor as well, which I'll cover again in this video. When you buy this as surplus, if you've got a lot of money to burn, you can buy brand new, just recently manufactured body armor, just like the police would do it, and you can actually get it for size fitted to you and everything that's really good. You can also, if you've got a lot of money to spend, buy it where it's like regular civilian looking jackets that have the Kevlar filler and stab proof filler in them, which are also very good, but obviously, for most people, you do what I did. You, for £40 plus, you can find the ex-police stuff. So how this works is Kevlar and a lot of the other materials in body armour has an expiry date. So what ends up happening, like lots of Milsurp kind of stuff, is that the stuff is designed to last quite a long time, but due to health and safety laws and companies not wanting to get sued, and also wanting repeat customers, the stuff is, you know, for covering their asses basically, they say this will only last five years, or it goes out of guarantee after five years. So what ends up happening is the police force might have these vests for five years, then they replace them with new vests, and then they sell them as surplus. So although the Kevlar may be completely intact and fine inside it, you know, they sell them on very cheaply, because otherwise they're just going to have to dump them so they get a bit of money back by selling them cheaply on the surplus market. And again, as a civilian, I'd say you're probably less likely to face all the threats you would from, you know, a police officer would face. So therefore you don't have to worry so much about the top-end protection aspects of it. So if you add something like, let's say, 3A Kevlar, and it could defeat a 7.62 Tokarev round um, from the pistol that can go through a lot of armour, you know, you'd probably be less concerned about that, but if it stopped a generic 9mm quite easily, you wouldn't have to worry too much if the armour degraded slightly and wouldn't stop a Tokarev anymore, but it would still comfortably stop a pistol round. As personally, I didn't buy this for any kind of handgun protection at all. I just personally bought it for knife protection because it's actually cheaper in the UK to buy the police surplus stuff that's rated for both than um, buying a specifically made knife-proof jacket or whatever. Or, as I said, we should always say knife resistance because they're never completely knife-proof. But hopefully, this has been a good sort of thing that's made you think about some of the points and sort of. And again, please in the comments, as long as you can be polite about it. If you think I'm wrong or anything, tell me why, and I'd be happy to listen to you and we can have a chat about it. But as I said, if you live in a dangerous area and you are worried about knife crime or whatever else, the police surplus um, body armor is generally very cheap and very good. Sometimes it will get replaced even before it's run out of its official expiry date, because sometimes what you see happen is that the police will say, you know, we're upgrading to a new model of vest, this might only be three years old, not five years old, but we'll just sell it all now while we get the replacement vests in. So, you know, you sometimes get stuff like that, so you can sometimes end up getting body armor that's only a year or two old, complete pristine condition, for like 40, 50 pounds. Oh, another point I'll mention, because this gets brought up a lot, people say, wearing a vest like this, you can get stabbed in the neck. Absolutely true, you can do. Somebody could stab you in the neck. However, remember, the neck's a much smaller place to try and stab in the chest. If you watch videos of stabbing, it's not that I recommend you do. Quite often, somebody's going like, like that with a knife into somebody's chest. Not their neck. Um, and you can get body armour that has the collars that go up to the neck. Personally, I wouldn't ra I'd rather not have that, because I like the mobility to look around. Again, you always want to try and avoid these sort of situations, rather than thinking, you know, I've got a vest, I'm inv invulnerable, please don't get into that mindset, because that can be quite dangerous. Um... But the vest obviously gives you a level of protection you otherwise wouldn't have. But yes, if you want to, you can buy vests that have the um, armoured neck collars. You could also wear clothing that makes it harder for somebody to slash or stab into your throat. You know, there's lots of different things you could do. But the point is that generally, saying this armour doesn't cover you... This, because other people said this armour doesn't cover your armpit. Somebody could stab you there. Yes, they could. But you can get armour that comes down to there. But then again, it's bulkier. So there's always, you know, like swings and roundabouts of this sort of stuff. You can get armour that covers more of you, but then it gives you less manoeuvrability and it's heavier. But, you know, this is at least going to protect your sides, your front and back from knife and, you know, pistol attacks. So it's going to do that. And remember, you should be avoiding the situation preferably in the first place, as I said. There seems to be some people that seem to think that, you know, if you buy body armour, you're going to immediately be trying to play a superhero and stopping things. No. My mentality when I got this body armour is I'm still going to avoid people that looked really dodgy and, you know, sketchy when I was out waiting for the bus or whatever, or walking to work and all that sort of stuff. It's just if somebody did attack you with a knife or anything like that, it gives you more protection than not having the vest. That was just simply my logic of having it. And it also makes you feel a bit more confident and said, don't take that confidence to be, 
you know, too strong to the point you can do other things, but it did make me feel a bit more confident if I was waiting at a bus stop and it was dark, you know, it makes you a bit less afraid to be there because you think, I have at least got my body armour on. You know, it's that kind of thing. So, hopefully you found this video interesting, and I said I'd like some good debates in the comments as long as people can keep it civil in case they agree or disagree with the points, because, you know, if somebody can make a convincing argument, they could change my mind on certain things, but... Hopefully that's brought up a lot of the pros and cons of body armour. I've done videos like this before, but you know, it's always worth doing them again because sometimes there's new points or arguments you want to counter or make people aware of, so there you go.